I spoke with Northrop's chairman, CEO, and president, Kathy Warden, about those results and more, including the fact that the company is hiring. Last year, we hired nearly 14,000 people. This year, we'll hire at least 12,000. And we've continued to see strong retention of our workforce. So we're netting 7,000 new employees last year and expect about the same this year. We are finding the talent we need, but we're also prepared that the labor market will likely tighten a bit this year as more companies expand, particularly in areas like Northrop Grumman hires in engineering and STEM talent. Yeah. Um, investors continue to be focused on defense spending. I know we've got a little more clarity, at least for fiscal 2022 and how the administration is thinking about this from a top line standpoint. But overall, what is your outlook for the trajectory in coming years uh, for that defense budget? We see defense budgets flattening a bit, but still at strong levels compared to historical norms. And more importantly, within the budget, we see some areas growing faster than others. For instance, space, nuclear deterrence, and advanced technologies like artificial intelligence, computing, and next generation networking. And these are all areas that Northrop Grumman is invested in and is performing in. In terms of the B-21, and I realize, again, there's limits in terms of what can be discussed, but um, the fact that the aircraft incorporates this flying wing design, which is a specialty of Northrop Grumman, it speaks to the stealth capabilities. I mean, is there anything more you can share about the design or the development of this plane, especially since we're starting to get comments out of China that there could be supposedly a comparable aircraft under development there? So there isn't a lot that I can share about the design, as you might expect. The U.S. holds dearly the design and the specifications of a system that is so core to our national security, like the B-21. But what I can say is the process we're using for developing the aircraft has reduced risk that you would normally see manifest in the testing of the aircraft by having surrogate test beds, being able to pull a digital thread from the design through to the production floor. And this is what gives our customer confidence that we'll be able to deliver not only the very capable B-21 bomber that we've committed to, but also do it on budget and on time. Yeah, you mentioned the land-based leg of the nuclear triad, the ground-based strategic deterrent. Uh, it's been under some scrutiny lately. You've had some lawmakers, at least, who maybe perhaps have refloated the idea again of um, extending the life further of the current Minuteman three ICBMs, the Biden administration getting its nuclear posture review underway as well. Why is it so crucial for the U.S. right now to move forward with the GBSD program? When you look at our current ICBM system, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile System, it was put in place in the 1960s. Just think of how our technology has come in the decades since. And so the thought that we would simply update that system is just not possible given where technology sits today. It makes a lot more sense to replace the system, leveraging the modern technologies as well as that digital ecosystem that I just referenced. And it's shown through studies that it's much more affordable to do so. So we are six years in on a program that was started in the Obama administration to indeed replace the current ICBM system. And we expect to be able to begin fielding at the end of the decade. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.